So I got these two frames off of Facebook Marketplace. I paid 120 bucks. And, you know, they're not in the best shape, but I keep sending the pictures to my friends and family, and most of the replies are, God, those things are in rough shape. But a lot of people don't see the potential that some of these things have. Really, you know, the, the racing cart frame here needs a little more work. It does need a floor pan and some tabs welded on and it's a little more rust than the red one but in reality both of them you know some paint and with the red one just some pedals and back into a seat and an engine and this thing will be good to go you know it does need new tires but they'll work for right now and with the racing cart here a floor pan and some paint and some wheels and the engine and it'll be good to go as well so and something i've always kind of took pride in is taking something that's most people would say was trash and like most of my go-karts i have they're i got them for 25 dollars or 125 dollars that somebody was just going to throw away and now they're all functioning working go-karts that i do some pretty I'm able to do some pretty cool stuff with. Been kind of debating what I'm going to do with it, but I think I'm going to try to make it into a drift cart like the Pink Go Kart. They're both similar in size and design. And something I've been wanting to do is make another drift cart so somebody else can try to tandem with me. So I'm going to do a similar setup as the Pink Go Kart. I am going to have a Predator 2 and 2 on this one with a torque converter. The pink go-kart does have the Tillotson, but I ran it with a Predator for a while. And to be honest, with the right gearing, it performs pretty similar to the Tillotson as far as drifting goes. Now, the Tillotson's got a bit more power, but uh, reduced the gearing on it. So, you know, it's similar to the way the Predator used to run on it, but I was using a much bigger gear in the rear with the Predator. The frame looks in like it's in rough shape, but overall it's pretty solid. There's a couple things that are broken, like the tabs for the floor pan here. And we've got a soft spot back here in the seat. A couple holes. So I'm going to weld these tabs back on. I'm gonna add a few bars here um, to mount a seat to, as opposed to sitting on the floor pan and that's honestly probably why those tabs broke and i'm just going to cut out the soft spot leave that open and i was going to repaint this but what i think i'm going to do is just once i fix the stuff that needs to be fixed i'm going to clear it and go with that patina look so i was getting some of the pieces on the frame cleaned off so i could re-weld the tabs on and i started looking over it and i thought this frame was in decent shape other than just needing paint but uh, once I started looking at it I noticed like it's just some something seemed a little weird with some of the uh, the joints and like all throughout the frame here There is, it's either JB Weld or Bondo, one of the two, and it was on all the joints covering up these bad welds. You can see some of it still down in there. There was some around this weld here or covering that up. Looking at it now, got to be what's here yeah I guarantee you there's some there it's got to be some more there so this frame definitely some right there you can see the lip of it so this frame may not be in as good shape as I had thought it might be but I'm gonna uncover some more of the welds and we'll weld it up right and 
get it going. Yeah, whoever was working on this frame before this, uh, probably shouldn't have been working on it. All right, so I got the brackets for the seat cut out and I'm gonna weld those on so we won't be, so I can mount a seat on there and we won't be sitting on the floor pan anymore.
So this is the steering wheel that came off of it. And you know, the wheel's in still in okay shape. It'd still work as a wheel, but you know, it's metal. So it's got some sharp edges and I would have to wrap something around it just so I wouldn't tear my hands up. But I remembered that I had found a wheel at Goodwill for $3 uh, the other a year or so ago. And I checked, it lines up with bolt holes. So we're gonna put this one on and uh, if we need to, we can repurpose the other one for something else. Steering wheel's on. Had to weld the hub for the steering wheel onto the steering column here. It was loose or the welds had broken that they had on there. Um, I do need to pop that pin out and put a complete pin in there so this doesn't pop in and out. So I got some new wheels, uh, went to Tractor Supply, found some tires that fit it. I wanted the slicks just to help it slide a little more and not tear up the grass. And let's see how they fit. I think I'm gonna have to add some spacers just to get a little clearance between the spindle bracket and the wheel, but we will see. Yep, just need a, just rubbing just a hair right there on the bolt head. So I'm gonna get a spacer and I think we'll be good to go. So wheels are on. Get the steering hooked back up. Had to shorten this one quite a bit because it was pretty far out of adjustment, at least an inch or so. All right, so I wasn't wanting to take the axle apart. The bearings that were on the axle were still good. I thought that the sprocket hub was still good that was on it but after looking a little closer it had a couple cracks in it it's that old cast sprocket that i see all the time on these carts i get so i needed to get that uh, sprocket hub off and in the process of getting the hub off i cracked it into a thousand pieces but in the process of taking the hub off i had to take the bearings off and i decided that if I had them off, because it took me two hours to get the axle apart. When this stuff gets old and rusted, it you couldn't imagine how much more difficult it is to do stuff. So I got I got the axle kind of set in the order it needs to be set in. Uh, none of this is tight yet because I've still got to, you know, add some. I gotta add some keys to a couple pieces. I need to tighten some stuff down and I need to know where I need to place it based off of the frame. But it's in the correct order. And when I took the sprocket hub off, it had this little insert here. And you know, it's got a, a key in it. So it will lock to the axle, but there's no way to keep it from sliding back and forth. Uh, there's no way to tighten it the original 
sprocket hub slid over it and it would tighten it down when you tightened the hub up. Now I'm gonna to try to use this piece because I won't need something to mount the brake drum to. I wanna to try to still have brakes on this thing. So I added a, added a lock collar on one side and there's another lock collar down in there. And I'm gonna to try to tighten those up and see if I can get this to stay in place. So we can still have our brakes and stuff. And here's the old stuff. You know, these, these bearings look a little dirty, but they were still working, but there's no, I'm not gonna reuse those. And you can see here is the old cast sprocket hub. I was trying to keep it in one piece when I was taking it apart, just, you know, as a kind of a vintage souvenir, but it started cracking and I just resorted to beating it with a hammer. And like I said, it took two hours to get all this stuff off the axle just because of the rust. And I uh, already had some bearings that I was gonna use on another project. I was able to reuse those. Um, also had this Burris sprocket hub that I was gonna use on a, another project, but we're gonna use it for this now. And we've got a 74 tooth sprocket. Uh, wanted to keep it as big as possible so we have as much torque for the drifting, but in the past I've run 80 tooth sprockets and you know 79 tooth sprockets and i always end up bending them i'll hit a an uneven spot while i'm drifting and it always bends the hub and and the sprocket so i decided to go a little smaller to get a little more clearance but i didn't want to go too small all right so got the axle mostly mounted up i didn't video any of that just because it's boring you know stuff tightening bolts all right so i'm gonna have to lift the engine to make clearance for the torque converter and the sprocket uh, so Got some steel here. I'm gonna have to uh, stack it. Well, gonna have to stack it to get enough height, but gotta cut two more of these. Got the riser welded up the other day. And it's a pretty big riser compared to a lot of the stuff I've had to do, but I bought some long bolts from Tractor Supply that will work and hopefully keep it tight on the frame and we're not gonna have any issues with it. So got the engine riser that I welded up the other day. And this is the engine that I took off of the pink go-kart. And, you know, this, this engine's been through a lot of abuse. And it still runs, runs super strong. So, I think it'll be fun. And it looks like they're going to work out pretty good. Now, I had no idea how long these bolts were going to really need to be um, beforehand, and I was trying to be prepared so I don't have to keep going back to the store. So I just bought a bunch of bolts from Tractor Supply, and luckily I found one that fit.
All right, so just make sure I got enough clearance. And of course, our riser is tall enough that we got plenty of clearance before we were hitting the torque converter here. And now I just got to get the sprocket for the torque converter here and the sprocket for the axle lined up. And it's kind of hard to tell in the camera, but they are just a tad off. So I need to slide that sprocket over on the axle and lock it down. All right, so I took a spare flywheel cover and I got all the paint off of it and I let it sit out for a couple days in the rain and let it get a little bit of, of rust on it and then cleared it to kind of match this since I was kind of going with that patina look. I'm gonna take off this cover that I spray paint hydro dipped. It's for a different cart with a slightly different look eventually probably change the valve cover there but we're gonna get this thing on and see how it looks so uh, making a seat uh, just out of wood want a little bit of give because um, this thing is a rattle trap it vibrates your whole body so I just used some thread certs. And well, I started by cutting the board to size, uh, laid the board down, I drilled holes all the way down through the seat supports and the floor pan, uh, just so they all matched up. And then I put the thread certs in and I made a hole on the in the floor pan big enough to that I could get a socket in there and just bolted it up. So I'm going to coat this with some polyurethane just so it doesn't break down if it gets wet over time, which is the issue I've had in the past where the wood at the bottom of the seat would ride out. And then I'm going to add some foam and some fabric and make a little seat for it.